Let's say you are a fairly intelligent white male in your 20s and you're coming out of puberty. You are coming out of religion but have only analyzed the part of your religious culture you were raised in as far as the God question goes and not the rest of the baggage that came with it. You're broke. You have depression. You see inequality and effects of prejudice all around you that you didn't cause and you were bad with women and need answers to all of why this world sucks. What do you do? You can do what I did in my late 20s. Come up with ideas that sound logical based on my religious and cultural understanding with no understanding of historical or academic depths to the subject I believe myself to be cleverly engaging in. I recently was drinking with my brother. We lived five years together back in college and hadn't been able to hang out for several years. He reminded me of quite a few awful ideas I toyed with when I lived with him. Those old memories brought back a ton of serious embarrassment and shame, but I realized they were necessary to become what I am now. These ideas I thought and felt were so true at the time because I thought I understood science, but I was really just beginning to grasp it. It was the beginning of a journey out of bad ideas I had been swamped with from my religion, and I was just beginning to question. I will discuss a few of these bad ideas over the next few episodes that, had the internet been what it is now, I could have either gotten sucked into the bubble of these bad idea communities, or I would have been so repulsed by their misanthropy, I would have rejected them entirely, or my own altruism would have caused them to reject me. I was almost a race realist. I'm sure race realists will say I obviously never was a true race realist, but I was skirting the border of ideology. Unlike most race realists, I didn't believe that other races were dumber than whites, but I did believe that other races were lazier than whites. I had a central belief that everyone has the potential to be smart, but most people are too lazy to tap it. I found I only had 135 IQ in the Navy, and knew people with much higher IQs who skated by and did the bare minimum and didn't think that deeply about anything in my opinion. People I, a person with 20 IQ points less than them, could run rings around in debates mostly because they didn't care. Part of this was true, part of this wasn't. I felt bad for the poverty in minority America and third world nations and felt helpless so I needed a working model for why they were poor before I could do anything. This reason, along with the need for closure and obliviousness to actual research done on the subject, or how to start researching it thanks to my religious upbringing, ensured some really bad ideas. What started me thinking about this idea was that my brother reminded me of a time when he brought a black co-worker over to hang out for drinks, and in conversation I straight up told him that I thought that people from warmer climates were less successful because they were naturally less hardworking than people in colder climates genetically, because warmer climates allowed them to not have to work as hard. I still cringe to this day to think how many levels of fractal wrongness this has and how insulting. Needless to say, the guy never came back over. Oddly, this is an idea that many colonial Americans believed in, including Thomas Jefferson, someone who, like me, had a lot of really bad ideas in his youth and reversed a lot of them as an adult and president, so people can quote him and make him agree with pretty much anything. One of the major levels right off the bat of why this is wrong is that warmer regions are actually often more inhospitable to humans than cooler regions, but most people think tropics like the Paradise Islands like Hawaii or the Caribbean. I recently discussed issues I had with Jared Diamond, but at least thanks to his book, Guns, Germs, and Steel, it killed this idea for me. Most of the world is very much lacking in easily acquired and stored food. Every piece of food we eat on the planet was genetically modified by us from an extremely small, low-calorie food we scavenged for. The plains areas turned out to be the best areas to grow most of our foods, with no trees to block it and lots of room to diversify. Also near the equator, heat leaches nitrogen out of the soil at an incredible rate. Africa is a mix of jungle, deserts, and equatorial plains, so growing food is really hard and requires a ton of work except for the southern tip and the edges. With the high levels of disease diversity, no domestic animals could be introduced to the sub-Saharan areas. Europe wasn't even able to colonize and invade inner Africa until the invention of steam power, the Gatling gun, and malaria medicine. Blacks being naturally lazy is BS, you had to be tough to live there. Compare it to Catholic peasant England, the number of holidays they had off was around a third of the year. It was only because people could store food and collect it that cities could be formed and science could be discovered and inventions created, as well as the trade of ideas. 
And there were great cities in Africa with great learning and inventions. Timbuktu in Mali was once a great seat of learning. The Swahili coast was a powerhouse of trade, but many are unaware of them, and the remoteness and low fertile regions made it difficult for new ideas to spread as quickly as the rest of the world, such as Europe. The Americas had their access cut off entirely until we came over with our diseases. Thankfully, I never believed the stupid and outdated beliefs that race realists hold that small brains mean lower IQ. Brain size and IQ test correlations have been all over the board in any broad-scale study, leading to nothing even close to significant evidence. Also, elephants have larger brains than we do, but they have one-third the neurons we do. If we ever figure out a way to measure biological intelligence, it will be a mix of total neuron count, total neuronal connections, and the amount of blood flow and activity to actually get nutrients to these highly clustered neurons. Even then, there may be other complications, such as a person may have a much more efficient way to think, similar to an older versus newer software that uses less energy and space. Einstein's brain was actually smaller than average, but it had a larger area that is associated with math and science. What areas are larger or smaller depend on what kind of thinking you do, often impacted by the society around you and what they find important. And lastly, I didn't understand what blacks and minorities have had to go through. I had to agree with my limited understanding with Edward Norton's character from American History X that Jews face persecution, concentration camps, and the ghetto, and they're doing well these days. What's up with the blacks? The history book I grew up with, homeschooled, was from Bob Jones University, as well as the Advanced Training Institute of America from Bill Gothard, which would help explain my complete ignorance on the subject. I actually never made the connection until a few weeks ago. Bob Jones University was a Christian school in South Carolina that has had a recent history of trying to block non-white students, or at least preventing whites and non-whites from dating. HEIA focuses so much on shoving Jesus down your throat with every lesson, they never bothered to tell me. I was fully aware of slavery and of segregation, but the in-between was a complete blur. I thought Martin Luther King just helped end segregation. I had no idea the true horror of the racial past. Until about two years ago when I started listening to college lecture podcasts through C-SPAN, I was clueless about racial history. I was unaware of Bacon's Rebellion, an uprising in the time when race was based more on nationality, aka non-Anglos. The Irish and German were considered inferior races, and blacks were just another one of those inferior races. But an even bigger divide was poor versus rich, and in Bacon's Rebellion, the indentured servants and slaves of all colors rose up against the wealthy landowners. These landowners knew they would be slaughtered in a heartbeat if they resisted, but the rich had a secret weapon the poor were and have always been oblivious to. Manipulation. The rich brought all the light-skinned people for talks and told them, Hey, you're just like us. You're white. We're white. How about we give you some land? But those savages over there, those people are inferior to all of us and need to be controlled for their own good. You should fear them from rising up. And the poor white people bought it, and got land, and then worked for the rich to create militias to prevent slave uprisings. It is a reason the Second Amendment is worded the way it is. Jefferson as governor required the Constitution to reword the Northern version to ensure that the Southern slave-controlling militias were better protected, and they suppressed many slave uprisings that were attempted, including an almost successful military takeover of New Orleans they were hoping to claim as the new black homeland. 